Hi there, this is Mr Evans with a video on income elasticity of demand. Um, so I've gone through price elasticity of demand in some detail. This is now income elasticity of demand. You need to be able to interpret um, income elasticity of demand data and analyse the impact of changes in uh, income on revenue. Okay, so what is income elasticity of demand? Income elasticity of demand, so in, in price elasticity of demand, we were saying, well, if price changes, how is that going to affect the quantity demanded? This time, we're looking at if people's incomes change, how will that affect the quantity demanded of a product? So, um, in the formula, Y represents income, and uh, it's calculated by the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. Okay, so we're looking what, by using this formula, uh, by calculating income elasticity of demand, often shortened to YED, we are looking to explain the strength of relationship between people's incomes and the quantity of a product demanded. In other words, if people's incomes go up, what's going to happen to demand for our product as a result of that? So, um, there are three different categories of goods that you need to be aware of. The first type of good are inferior goods. These are products that show negative correlation between changes in income and the quantity of that uh, product demanded. So in other words, as income goes up, uh, the quantity demanded of a product will go down. Um, as incomes increase, uh, people buy less of a product as a result. It's known as an inferior good. People get more money, they switch to consuming other goods. So it, it's demonstrated by a negative YED. So if there's a change in income, a positive here, at the bottom of the equation, there would be a negative here. If, uh, and uh, inversely of course, if incomes go down, the quantity demanded of uh, inferior goods go up. People, as they, they get, people get relatively less well off, they switch to consuming inferior goods. So, these are demonstrated by a negative YED because there's a negative correlation between the exams, so uh, between the, the figures, sorry. So, um, minus 0 0.5, minus 1.6, minus 2.8, all of these, anything with a minus in, indicates that there is inferior, uh, uh, that you've, if you're calculating income elasticity of demand, which you don't need to in the exam, but if you're told that the, uh, the um, product has a negative income elasticity of demand, you know that uh, that is an inferior good, and as incomes go up, the quantity demanded of that good will go down. So, Inferior goods, uh, let's have a look at an example. Um, okay, so we've got a product. Uh, incomes have gone up by 5%. That's the percentage change in the Y. Incomes increased by 5%. Um, there's been a minus 1% change in the quantity demanded for the product. Um, and this expressed as a percentage, excuse me, that's an error, um, leads to a coefficient income, elast an income elasticity of demand coefficient of minus 0 0.2, not expressed as a percentage. Um, so, what sort of product um, might uh, be categorised as inferior goods? Well, often bus tickets are inferior goods. As people increase their income, they prefer to take taxis or uh, learn to drive a car themselves, and they will switch from getting the bus to taking another form of transport. Staycations, the idea of a staycation where rather than going on holiday abroad, um, if there's a fall in income, people might choose to um, stay at home and take a cheaper holiday. Okay, um, this was seen uh, after the 2008 financial crisis in Great Britain. A lot more Britons uh, staying at home rather than going abroad on holiday. Um, and uh, inferior good demand for staycations went up as incomes went down. 
Okay, so um, the next sort of goods you need to know about are normal goods. Okay, products that show a positive correlation between changes in income and changes in the quantity demanded. So we would expect this relationship between most goods as incomes go up, people tend to demand more things because they've got more disposable income. And if we get a positive relationship, in other words, a plus here at the bottom, incomes go up and therefore plus on the top, therefore the quantity of demand goes up, we've got a positive relationship. Um, there are two types of normal goods that you need to be aware of. The first are necessities. These are goods for which demand changes by proportionally less than incomes. There's a weak correlation between income and demand. So if you're calculating anything, it's, got, it's a positive, but it's um, got a zero in front of it. This would indicate that the product is a necessity. In other words, incomes might be going up by 10%, uh, but the quantity uh, demanded is only going up by 2% or 5% or 9%. The change in quantity demanded is proportionally less to the change in income. It indicates that although incomes are going up and consumers are spending a, a bit more money on it, these aren't the sort of goods that consumers are really excited about spending money on. So uh, let's have a look. So incomes go up by 10%, uh, demand for a product goes up by 3%, therefore the coefficient of demand is 0. Uh, the coefficient of the income elasticity of demand is 0 0.3 positive. So what sort of goods would this cover? Things like fruit and vegetables and uh, things like cleaning products, toothpaste, uh, essentials basically. Um, okay, my income's gone up uh, by 10%. I'm not going to spend all of my extra money on polish or floor cleaner. As a result, I might um, upgrade the brand that I use or I might use it a little less sparingly um, but I'm not going to spend loads of my extra income on um, goods like this. Okay so uh, necessities, positive relationship between the two, not a really exciting good that the consumers get really excited and have got loads more money, I'm going to go out and spend all of my money on this good. Okay so um, second type of normal good that you need to be aware of are luxuries. These are products for which demand changes by proportionally more than income. In other words, there's a strong correlation between changes in income and demand. So anything um, with a uh, coefficient of demand of over one would be said to be a luxury. In other words, in these examples, as incomes are going up by 10%, there might be an 11% change in demand, a 17% um, change in demand, a 33% change in demand. But uh, uh, luxuries are products which are strongly correlated. As uh, incomes go up, the proportion uh, or of, there is a large proportional change in quantity demanded. Okay, so having a look at an example, a 6% rise in income leading to a 10% change in quantity demanded. We can see that there's a strong relationship as income goes up, uh, there's a, a strongly proportional uh, change, you know, the quantity demanded is changing more than the percentage change in income. Um, I put that through the calculation and it gives me a figure of 1.6. 6 recurring, rounded to 1.67 um, and I know now that that is a luxury product like perhaps a foreign holiday or a sports car, goods for which people as their incomes go up they will be highly uh, incentivized to spend their money on um, and uh, therefore these products there's a strong relationship between changes in income and changes in quantity demanded.